it can be really, really hard to work out what you wanna do with your life and harder still to actually do it. I have been thinking about this a lot recently about what I want from life and what I need to make me feel like I'm really living my life to the full and feeling my happiest. And recently it has been the realization that I kind of want to be a photographer. I love taking photos. I always have. I love filming as well, obviously, from this whole YouTube channel. And I love the idea that I could spend my life doing both of those things, filming through my content and photography through my photography business that I am currently in the process of starting up. I am going to be photographing weddings. I've second shot my first wedding alongside another photographer. I have got more in the calendar. I am making connections. I've bought business insurance, I've done admin, I've set up an email address, I've got a website, I can invoice. I have done all the things to get this set up. I am invested in this and I am so excited. I feel like I've been a little bit lost for a long time with what I want to do and struggling to see what I want to do versus what I am currently doing and know how to do and the difference between those two things. And now I figured it out, I am just so excited for the future. I feel like I can actually see a little bit more of what I think my life is gonna look like in five, 10 years. And I know things are probably gonna change and there's no certainty in any of it, but I've never really been able to think that far in advance before and kind of picture what that would all look like and what I want it to look like. And it feels kind of strangely encouraging that I can now picture that. So I feel really, really excited. This is just gonna be a normal weekly vlog style video, but with a focus on the fact that I am setting all of this up, I have some videos I need to edit for my content. I am still doing some admin for photography work and trying to build up a base for that. And I'm just so excited to be working on that. Bookwise, I'm not really gonna be talking about this book specifically in this vlog, but this is what I'm currently reading. I will pick up another book in this vlog as well. I'm just not sure what it'll be yet. But this is The Murder After the Night Before by Katie Brent. The reason I'm not gonna be talking about this one in this vlog is because this is a book I am reading for cover to cover episode two. If you would like to check that out, I think it will be live by the time you're watching this, so click up here. I'm also gonna be starting the audiobook for The Watchmaker Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley, which is our Patreon book club pick for March and April. So I need to get on that because we are quickly approaching the end of April, which is just whizzed by. So that's the plans. Today I'm gonna go work in a cafe and I think do some editing because I've got quite a stack that's building up. I just feel, I feel so excited and so optimistic and so ready for everything that's to come. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side to side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. I think one of my favourite things to do with a freelance work day is to go into town and work in a cafe. I love being around people and I work so much in my flat as it is that any chance to get out, I will take. I'm fully gaslighting myself into thinking it's summer just because there's blue skies and the sun is out. It is still very much spring, barely just about spring. Oh my gosh, I love this time of year so much. The sun makes me immensely happy. It's Saturday, I'm gonna go into town. I'm gonna read by the canal because it's sunny and I'm excited. And then I've got my friend coming over. a 
book yesterday and I also bought clothes and the two match each other and I promise that this was not intentional but I've accidentally created a little bit of a, a colour scheme going on here. <laughs> the book is Rory Powers in A Garden Burning Gold and honestly this was a cover pickup and then a blurb and cover by. A little bit of a combination of the both. Rhea and her twin brother Lexos have spent eternity, an eternity using cunning and magic to help rule their small, unstable country. Rhea controls the seasons to show favour to their most loyal stewards with bountiful harvests and short winters, while Lexos keeps the tides strong and impassable to maintain the country's borders. Reigning over them both is their father, who holds dominion over death, using his most powerful weapon, fear, to keep the people and his children in line. For a hundred years, Rhea and Lexos have been, have been each other's only ally, defending themselves and their young siblings against their father's increasingly unpredictable anger, while also trying to keep up the appearance of unity and prosperity within their borders. Now, with an independence movement a gaining ground and their father's iron grip weakening, the twins must take matters into their own hands to keep the world from crashing around them. But as Rhea and Lexos fight to save their family, they begin to draw very different conclusions about their father's style of rule. And if the siblings aren't careful, they'll end up facing each other on the battlefield. Honestly, I felt like it was a summer fantasy book for the reason of there's a sun on it there's elemental kind of magic well not really and like nature based nature based magic and i just felt like it gave me the vibes that i want to be reading at the moment so i picked this up i have absolutely no idea anything about it never heard of it before but I bought this. <laughs> I'm also gonna give you a public service announcement alongside a clothing haul. I have started shopping in the H&M men's department for oversized t-shirts. They have 100% cotton oversized t-shirts for $8.99 and they're actually oversized, like they're actually loose fitting. So many tops in the women's section say they're loose fitting and they're just not. It never actually seems to be as loose fitting as it promises to be. But the men's loose fitting tops, they are actually loose fitting. So I got this one, it's an extra large and I just feel like they are perfect for just lazy days, for something that's just very comfy, but also to sleep in because they're 100% cotton so they do feel a bit more breathable. So I picked up this one to sleep in, which is a little Snoopy top which is so cute. Again, extra large. I don't think this one's actually classified as a loose fit. This one's a regular fit. This one says it's a loose fit, but they fit quite similar. Um, and then I also picked up, this one is actually from the women's section, but it's, it's actually quite oversized. Again, I think an extra large. Hang on. Yeah, extra large women's top, $9.99. Extra large men's top, $8.99. Okay, both 100% cotton. But this one's giving me the summer vibes. As you can tell, I'm very excited for the summer and I'm just gonna embrace everything that allows me to feel excited about that. Not quite as exciting, but I got a pair of black linen trousers. This is for my photography work. I have one pair of black chinos that I wear, but I like having two options and also having these as linen means they're a little bit more breathable, again, for the summer months. <laughs> and then I got two shirts. Everything is blue. I don't really wear blue very much. I don't know if I think blue suits me, but I really liked both of these, so it suits me now. <laughs> the first one is this shirt with this print. <laughs> I am so bad at showing clothing, but I got this one. And then the other one is this shirt with this print. They look similar. This one is a bit more of a relaxed fit. Well, they're both quite relaxed fit. Look, I don't know. Okay, hang on, what's this class does? I don't know, but they're different fits. They're similar, but different. <laughs> I'm so bad at dressing myself at the moment. I just don't feel good in much that I'm wearing at the moment. And I hate that feeling because I really like dressing fun and expressing myself through that and it's been a long time since I feel like I've really done that and quite enjoyed doing that. I kind of tend to stick to the same outfits at the moment. I would like to try and branch out a little bit more again with that. I think it's tricky trying to find clothes that I feel good in and that I feel like fit me nicely and make me feel good versus clothes I'm like this is okay but I don't feel great in it. Like you deserve to feel the best in everything you wear and I want to feel like that so that is why I got a couple of new bits of clothing. Yesterday I stumbled across a rapeseed field which has this beautiful yellow flowering and it doesn't flower for long and April is the best month to be able to see that flowering and I would really like to go out with my drone and get some shots there. However, I'm on sprints all day today and I do want to sit and read on sprints because I want to finish my book and start another book. Maybe, I mean, will I start this one? Maybe. I'm also considering The Will of the Many because I've heard a lot of good things about that and I kind of want to read that before the hype gets to me, but I don't know. I don't know what I fancy. I'll see what happens when I finish my current read, which I am really enjoying. But uh, yeah, I would like to try and get out with my drone 
but I don't know if that's going to be feasible or not, whether I'm going to fancy that or not. I just kind of, I want a lazy day, but at the same time I want to go out and film and photograph. <laughs> so it's the two sides of my brain are battling each other. So we'll see which one wins. But if I don't go today, I want to go sometime this week because I don't want to kick myself for missing it. And today is, I think, the sunniest day coming up over like the next five or six days. So anyway, sprints start very soon. So I'm going to go film an Illumicrate unboxing and then get ready for sprints. I love doing these all day sprints. I always get so much done, whether it's reading or productivity. I always try and have something that I'm dedicated to doing. Usually on the all day ones, it is reading and maybe I do like an edit sprint or two but then I pretty much turn to reading so I'm looking forward to finishing my book which I have like that much left of so definitely definitely will finish that today. Okay I've come to film this beautiful field look at the colours I've got my drone I still get such anxiety flying my drone I've had it for a good few months now I have insurance on it and everything but there's something very <laughs> anxiety inducing about sending something so expensive into the sky. So I'm just going to do it because the only way to get over it is to practice and see that it is okay. <laughs> Flown. That went fine. Turned out what didn't go so fine. <laughs> I really need a profile picture for my photography stuff. I need a professional profile picture and it's very hard to take one of myself. My camera, the app that works with it for remote shooting is just a bit rubbish. So I think what I need to do is go out with somebody, give them another camera and then maybe have my camera in the photo with me and that might look quite nice, but I'm really struggling. <laughs> so I was trying to take it today and I've got my tripod with me and I set my tripod up and the wind was like fairly fine and then it suddenly picked up, tried to knock the camera and the tripod over. I caught it, so it was quite close to it and I was like, right, okay, we'll, we'll move it a little bit. It wasn't quite on the best footing. So I re-jigged it, the wind slowed back down, it was fine. And then the wind picked back up again and I was a little bit further away. So I had to like dive bomb into the tripod <laughs> to catch it, which has <laughs> resulted in me grazing my knees. So I feel like a child. <laughs> I've got mud all down my trousers and I saved the camera so it was fine it's a shame I wasn't filming because that probably would have been very funny so it was all fine but I did uh, roll into some stinging nettles so I've stung all down the side of my hands <laughs> oh it's really windy again now yeah so that happened but I'm gonna go go back home now because we are on sprints I've just come out here to get all this in the middle of one. So it's been fun. I'm glad I came. That wasn't quite so bad with the drone. I didn't feel such bad anxiety with it. So hopefully the more I do it, the better that becomes.
So I was meant to have finished this book on Sunday. It's now Wednesday and I finished it last night. So a little bit later than I thought, but I ended up getting a little bit distracted on Sunday. I did read on Sunday for the sprints, but I was doing a couple of other productive bits as well. Finished this, loved it, gave it four out of five stars. I'm not gonna talk to you about it because it's all talked about in my cover to cover episode three vlog. Then I also started Cat Gamer last night by Waturo Nadatini. This was so good. It was so cute. I've added the other ones to my wish list because I just need to read more from this. This is literally just about a woman who really loves video gaming and she adopts a cat and how the cat and her integrate into each other's lives and with the game inclusion as well and it just... Oh. It was great. It was really cute. Gave it four out of five stars. I finished it last night. Now I don't have anything to read. I mean I do. I literally have a library of books around me to read but I kind of hit task paralysis last night of trying to pick a book to read so I wasn't really sure this morning I was going to be like let's go along and pick what we read and we were going to do that I was going to take you along and we'll pick what I'm going to read next but then I got a notification that I had a book arriving today I've already forgotten the name of it but I can tell you it's the new David Nichols book I haven't read a David no actually have I I don't know if I've read a David Nichols uh th this one's called You Are Here I can't remember if I've read One Day or not I don't know. I've definitely watched the film. I've watched the show. Fab. I just can't remember if I read the book or not. Fun fact about One Day is that it's set on the 15th of July every year. That is my birthday. So I feel like I have read it. I don't know. Anyway, I ordered David Nichols' latest book because it's got a, like a walking travel element in it and I feel like that would be the perfect one to read at the moment because one, that is exactly like the kind of adventure type of book that my heart is craving at the moment and two, I've already done quite a few like different walking bits in this vlog so I feel like it's the perfect book to fit in. So that's arriving today. I have a lot of stuff I need to do in the meantime. I need to film Fictionary. I need to edit the last cover to cover episode because I've now finished that book so I can edit that episode. And I was going to do a stream. I've also got some freelance stuff I need to do today for Paper and Word. I work freelance for them as their head of social and content. They are a fantastic company that sells book sleeves. And at the moment we're working on a huge new launch and I'm so excited. We are having a new website, we've got some new products and by the time you're watching this it's all going to be live so if you want some bookish goodies including book sleeves and other fantastic bookish items I will leave a link down below because I love paper and words so much and if you haven't already checked them out you definitely should. Also I hear you should definitely follow us on Instagram because I hear the person like making that content is just really cool. <laughs> Okay, sitting here talking isn't gonna get any of this stuff done. I think I'm gonna film Fictionary first because filming is always the bigger task in my head, even though actually I think editing in reality is the bigger task. But there's lots to do and I'm excited. Okay, Fictionary is done. A little bit of an area to tidy up, but not much. I'm editing cover to cover at the moment and we'll be editing Fictionary and editing this vlog, so vlogception, but I think I'm gonna write the script now for what I have to say for a voiceover and cover to cover, because that always seems to take me the longest there, but all my filming is done. I've been feeling so small, watch the clock ticking off the wall. Okay, was not expecting the cover to be like this. This is printed on the hardcover and then you've got that, which is so cool. Right, this is exactly what I'm in the mood for. And this is a really cool cover. I really like that. Let's, let's have a look at the actual blurb. Marnie is stuck, stuck working alone in her London flat, stuck battling the long afternoons in a life that often feels like it's passing her by. Michael is coming undone, reeling from his wife's departure, increasingly reclusive, taking himself on long solitary walks across the moors and fells. When a persistent mutual friend and some very English weather conspire to bring them together, Marnie and Michael suddenly find themselves alone in the most epic of walks and on the precipice of a new friendship, but can they survive the journey? This is exactly what I'm looking for at the moment. I want something with a bit of adventure, a bit of a 
journey in it. I don't have enough books like this on my shelves. I really enjoyed reading Wild last year by Cheryl Strayed, which is a true story autobiography. I've been looking for others ever since that have had that kind of sense of adventure about them, but I, honestly I don't have enough. So if you have, if you have any recommendations, please let me know, but I shall be reading this in this vlog. Malbook's game in the mail. Hey, I got this really cool arc in the mail from Viper. This is The Examiner by Janice Hallett. It came with these stickers, a little scroll, some colouring in pens, and a giant line notebook, I assume, to write down my thoughts as to the whodunit of this book. This is a colour inable cover, which is so cool. I don't think I've ever received an arc I can colour in the cover of. I love the idea of this. They've said that I can try and match it to the finished cover's colours. Also, really like this colour pen. That is a nice green shade. The colouring of this video is probably going to change it, but trust me, it's a nice green shade. Anyway, oops. This is a scroll from an examiner telling you that they think there's been a murder and they want you to try and work out who has done it. This is Janice Hallett's latest book. I have a love-hate relationship with Jan Janice Hallett. I didn't like The Twyford Code, DNF'd it, really liked the appeal and liked the Christmas appeal. I like the mixed media type of format of the appeal. The email conversations is how you get told the story and work out the murder case. The Twyford Code, I just didn't like the, the voice behind the narrator, so I'm really hoping I like this one. This one's told, I think, in like messages. I'm not really sure, but it's got more of a dark academia vibe to it. It's got the murder mystery. I am excited. Thank you very much, Viper, for sending this my way. This comes out, hang on, when, when's the release? August, August 2024, if you want to pick up a finished copy of this. Also, my National Geographic arrived in the post today and oh, I find octopuses really creepy. I The fact that they can fit anywhere their tentacles can fit, oh, it really creeps me out. And now there's one on the front cover and I have to stare at it, so I might just sit with it open like that and look at this watch instead. I just, oh, does anyone else feel this way about octopuses? They're just, mm, octopuses and squids. No, no, not for me. I've just noticed that this arc actually is like paint by numbers colouring in. It, I just noticed the numbers on it. I don't know if I'm gonna, I'm gonna colour this in or not because I feel like I'm gonna make it look really shit, but I like the idea of it a lot. <laughs> I'm undecided. <laughs> Quick reading update. I am like 60, 70 pages into this. Very slow, but I'm really liking the outdoorsiness of it and the fact that they are just on this adventure in nature, appreciating what's around them and the contrasting array of characters that we've got going on that adventure. And I'm intrigued to read more. I've been told that David Nichols is very funny. I found a couple of bits funny, but not overwhelmingly hilarious at the moment, but I am excited to keep going with it. And in true form of the theme of this vlog and this book, I am going on another walk today. It's a little bit grim outside. I was hoping it would be nicer weather, but it's fine. It's fine. It's not raining. It's just wet on the ground, so I shall wear wellies. I just love being outside. It makes me happy. So I was waiting on a package arriving before I go for my walk. I'm so excited about this. This is my new camera lens. I needed a wider angle lens to shoot wedding photography at a lower aperture, so basically that means that I can get more in the frame with a nice blurry bokeh background and I could not afford that, so I have been saving for this whole month, which doesn't sound like a long time to be saving for, but I also made the decision to sell some old gear, but basically I did my first wedding shoot at the start of April. No, the end of March? It was the end of March, and I've got my next shoot coming up next weekend, and I knew I needed this lens for that shoot, and I knew that was really important, and getting together the money for it was gonna be really difficult, but once I committed to selling some older gear that I didn't use as much, I was able to club together to get this. I've also sold a bunch of books and I'm continuing to sell books to afford more equipment in the future, but I got this and I'm so 
glad that I am able to have this in time for this wedding shoot and I am also proud of myself for being able to make it work in time for this wedding shoot. This also signifies the completion of my basic lens kit for photography, for wedding photography. I still need to get a couple of bits, like a couple more SD cards and things, but lens wise I've got a pretty good like base kit to get going with. Here she is! This is kind of scarily wrapped, I don't want to accidentally drop it. Oh, okay, I know that this is a camera lens and not a book, but just, you know, humour me with the excitement. So this is, this is my camera that I use for my photography. Let's put it on! I just, I, I love photography so much and it makes me so happy to see this growing. So, hello from my 35mm lens! Okay, now I can go for a walk. Now this package has arrived, I can go for my walk. Just in case anybody cared, this is the lens that I use for vlogging. This is a wide angle lens. This has a much higher aperture, so it means the background is a lot less blurry, but it is a wider frame lens, so I can fit all of me in it. I can zoom in and out and have it as wide as I like. Well, not as wide as I like, but you know, this is what this lens look like, looks like on my vlogging camera, whereas this is what the new lens looks like on the camera that I use for photography. And I do also use this camera for a little bit of video work as well, but mainly photography. But look at that background blur! Now it is time to go out for a walk. So I'm out on a walk with Tilly. Say hi, Tilly. Hi. <laughs> and uh, we got flooded once on this walk, but we got over it through carefully placed branches. But I don't think we're getting around this. <laughs> it's so bad. I mean, it rained a little bit last night, but not enough. Yeah, and really so, bad choice of footwear. Yeah, Tilly's got Converse's. Yeah. But there's even, we're not going yeah. across. There's yeah. even size to tell us not to go across. So we're gonna make a new route. Why? You Are Here has been such a nice reading experience. This has been the perfect book to read over the last week. This is a contemporary kind of romance. It's following two people who are both doing this walk for different reasons. They're both alone in life, but see loneliness and being alone as in different ways. And getting to know them and their stories as they go on this really long walk across one side of the country to the other was just such a powerful reading experience. You feel like you get to know them so well. This was really a people watching observational kind of novel and I absolutely loved it for that. Halfway through I actually ended up picking up the audiobook for this and I think that was such a good decision. I don't normally tandem read, which is where you're listening and reading at the same time. I kind of struggle to keep paying attention to the physical reading part, but I gave it a go for this and it actually worked really well. I think because this was so dialogue heavy, having a narrator read that in my ears was such a good decision and there's two narrators for this, a man and a woman, and the woman is so good. She delivered this dialogue so brilliantly, her comedic timing and the way that she reacted as a narrator just really made it feel like she was the character. So I had a great time with this. I, it was really emotional, it got me in the feels and I thought it probably would because it's David Nichols, but it just had some really interesting conversations. There was a part about loneliness that I thought was written in such a lovely way. Okay, so this is the paragraph. I realise this sounds like I'm putting on a brave face, but we make too big a deal about being alone. People aren't meant to spend their whole adult lives with one person. In fact, very few do. Well, not very few, but your parents, mine, they're not the majority, and lots of people live without a life partner. I don't know why this perfectly common thing's thought of as odd or sad. And I just... I thought that was really well worded because I feel like society does think it's strange if you are single and that is, you know, a lot of the questions that people have that aren't really like heavily involved in my life, like people that I just kind of come across in life, people do question it or like kind of say, oh, it's okay to be alone. I'm like, yeah, I know. I know it's fine. So this book had 
an interesting conversation about that and it also had the element of the walk and being around nature and taking on a challenge like that and looking at the world a bit differently and being unplugged it was funny it had a really good sense of humour about it and it hit hard. I thought it was really good. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I also finished The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley, which I again had a pretty good time with. I gave that 3.5 out of 5 stars. The narrative felt very scattered for that one and at times I was kind of thinking like what are we, where are we, who are we following? The, the main kind of plot is set between two different characters, one of whom is a woman who has got a real restriction on what she's able to do and what she's able to get access to as someone who's trying to be a scholar and the other is following a man who comes across a watch that is a bit mysterious and ends up getting swept up in this whole bigger thing that involves a lot of like a political element going on and bombings that are happening as well and there's a whole integration of these two storylines coming together. There is a clockwork octopus in this book called Katsu. I have said in this vlog I'm not very keen on octopuses however the clockwork kind was kind of cute so that one that one was okay but I thought this was going to kind of go a little bit more into the whimsy than it did. I think it was definitely intriguing and I have a lot of questions about it kind of fantasy elements. It was loosely, I'm not really sure, I don't really know. What does Goodreads class the genre of this as because really like finishing it I put it in as historical but there are there's, there's other elements to it than that I honestly can't quite make up my mind on my thoughts on it I really liked the writing style and the the wholesomeness that the narrative felt like it had it, it just felt like a quite a cozy type of story but I feel like it at the same time felt very scattered and that's where I feel like I was losing bits of it. Okay so it categorizes on Goodreads as fantasy, historical fiction, steampunk which kind of works um so we'll go with we'll go with those. Oh interestingly quite a few of the other reviews say that it is quite confusing and that that it's quite genre defying which I suppose makes sense because yeah it does it I feel like I can't really pin it to one specific genre. There was a bit of a clairvoyance element in it as well it just I, I don't really know I'm <laughs> I have I'll probably have more things to say on it but right now my brain's just like did I did I like I think I liked it. I liked that there was the discussion of how the the woman in it was being oppressed and how things were different for her and there was kind of like this acceptance of this ignorance that some of the characters had and I think that the author wrote that in a really clever way to highlight that ignorance, is, that, that ignorance in them and have those conversations. I think that was interesting. 3.5 out of 5 stars. 4.5 out of 5 stars. I'm going to wrap this vlog up here. I think I'm going to do a Will of the Many themed vlog coming very soon so that might be the next book I pick up so keep an eye out for that. But thank you so much for watching this vlog and coming along on a week and a half I think it's been but I am so excited because this weekend I am shooting my second wedding as a photographer which I am so looking forward to and after work today I am going to a rounders club. It's about half an hour away from me, it's the first time I'm going but it's a women's rounders club. I'm so excited because I loved playing rounders so so much at school so to be able to do something near me I'm really looking forward to that and it's sunny, everything is good so thank you very much for watching this vlog. If you do ever want to take part in our Patreon book club we do a discussion on Fable and it's available to anyone in the Rivendell tier upwards. You do get to join in on the vote for each book as well. We read a different book every two months. I think our next read is going to be the fifth season by N.K. Jemison, but the voting hasn't quite closed yet but it's very close so I think it's going to be that one. Anyway there is a link down below if you want to join in. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.